Hey everyone, this is Baphometrics, and I'm coming at you today with a nice short video for a change. I'm gonna blow your mind with how short this one is because the technique I'm gonna show you is incredibly simple and easy to set up in Bitwig. So this is kind of uh, back in my Bitwig versus Ableton theme. Mr. Bill very recently posted a really great tutorial on a technique he calls hocketing, which is a great name for it, by the way. I've never heard that before, even though I've been aware of this technique. And uh, he shows how to do it in live, and he shows a couple techniques for doing it in live, and I really recommend you watch this video because it's great. Um, and I made a comment in here that, you know, you, you jump through a lot of hoops and do some crazy workarounds with the compressor device to, to get this to work the way you want it to. And I made a comment that uh, the same type of hocketing technique is pretty simple in Bitwig. And... He replied with, great, make a video. So, hey, Mr. Bill, here I am making a video about it. Um, so the basic idea is, you know, you have any section of MIDI and you want to jump around between different instruments and it sounds kind of like this. All right, you get the idea. So what's going on here? I've only got one device in uh, the device panel or the insert chain for this track. If we look at the automation, we can see that there's uh, an automation lane here that's making some changes between what look like some different synthesizers. And sure enough, if we expand this instrument selector, we can see that uh, this is a Bitwig device called an instrument selector. I'll show you how to do this in a minute, how to find it. And I've got uh, three instances of DS Thorn, one instance of Serum, one instance of Phase Plant, and one instance of VPS Avenger. And each of them has a slightly different patch loaded into them. Like here's one Thord patch called Lead Moment. Here's a, a Serum patch called, these all up on my other monitor waiting for Serum to open up for me. Come on, Serum, where are you? <laughs> All right, Serum's being recalcitrant. Oh, snap, there we go. All right, um, so, you know, a Serum patch and so on and so forth. So the way that this works, if you watch the automation lane as I play and you watch the yellow lights that pop through here, you're just gonna see it cycles through all the instruments here based on this value right here which is uh, an index selector. This is kind of like the chain select in a group in uh, an Ableton device chain. Like if you make a group of devices and you can open up the chain view and then move that little index selector at the top, that's effectively what this is doing, but they have a first class device for doing this. So here we go and play it. And of course, if I want to change the order, I can just, you know, drag these index markers to different positions. Okay, so it's as simple as that. And uh, the way that you, you build this is incredibly simple. I'm just going to deactivate this one. Make it go away entirely. And we'll just add a new one here. So selector, these are the two Bitwig devices, FX selector and instrument selector. Uh, and if I were to do this and show you it in the context of Bitwig, let's get rid of this. So here's all the Bitwig devices, lots and lots of them. And here's, you know, there's this thing called instrument layer. Let's drop that in and just compare it with instrument selector, just so you can see the difference. All right, so the main difference is, you know, you can both put in layers of things like serum. Let's put in another one. Oops, go away. Let's put in another one. Let's put in horn. Okay, so instrument layer is just like a group in Ableton, where you can have multiple sound generators, synths, effects, chains, whatever you want, 
And they're all happening in parallel at the same time, unless of course you mute one. So you could, you know, change the relative volume balance of the things and have a layered sound. That's what layer is for. And that's why this container in Bitwig is called a layer container, right? But uh, a selector container is a little different. When you add things here, So we'll just pick some random serum patch. Uh, let's pick something simple, right? Close it down. Let's go add another instrument like uh, phase plant. Let's pick a patch. Okay. Let's go pick another one. Avenger. Let's pick something like uh, this one, right? So you can just pick all your different instruments, load them up, and each one of them has an index number. There's this little index selector here. I'm just scrolling up and down with my mouse. And the index selector, if you click on it, and um, you have a uh, instrument selector FX lane, right? As soon as I pick this, like if I pick something else like the oscillator one volume, okay, now this lane has changed. But if I go back here to the index selector and just click on it once, now I have this. And you can come in here and make your first point, make your second point, make a third point, and so on, right? And it's literally that simple to set up any kind of hocketing run through. Now, the thing that's really cool about the instrument selector and its corresponding sibling, which is called FX selector, which is, this is meant for like chains of FX devices, certain FX processing. It's not expecting to have synths inside it, but it still has a uh, Q. still has uh, an index selector, right? So if I put two different things in here, right, I can still select between these chains and I could build whole complex processing chains inside each one of these uh, layers, if you will. But there's a, an index selector for the layers right here. So, you know, you just select the index selector and make your automation or add modulators to jump between these layers, whatever. And it's that simple. Now, what's really, really cool about using a selector in Bitwig versus using setting up a, a group with a bunch of different chains in Ableton and then using the chain selector to swap between the different chains in the group is these selector devices will actually ring out the tail of any one sound when it jumps to the next sound. So if this serum patch had a little bit of reverb built into it and it had a tiny little bit of reverb tail, as soon as I jump at a, you know, a certain beat marker to the next synth, this sound is still going to ring out. The tail is going to ring into the start of this synth. So it's a very seamless, it's not choppy. It's more like in machine when you jump around between different uh, sounds in a group. The, all those tails ring out, or when you jump between groups, the tails ring out into the resulting audio. And these instrument selectors are the same way. So it's not, it's not this abrupt choppy change. It's everything blends smoothly into the next thing as it jumps around with all these. So that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, I've talked about these before. They're great devices. They're unique to Bitwig as far as I know. Uh, Ableton doesn't have anything like this. And it can make something like this hocketing technique incredibly simple and fast to set up. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.